Alrighty y'all, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are enjoying your day. We're looking at the 43rd Australian Van Nationals. This comes to us from a channel called Shannon's Insurance. Uh, I've heard of them through you guys and, and just seeing some automotive stuff. So uh, this is pretty cool to see. This will be linked in the description down below if you would like to check them out further. And uh, what's there to say? Let's get right into this. This was suggested to us from Jason on Facebook, the IW Rocker Facebook account. So you can look at that. I'm also on uh, Instagram at IW Rocker. Uh, thank you for the suggestions. I think this came from a couple other people too recently. So uh, here we go. Kid, I am Fledge, and welcome. May, may I say, uh, if, if you didn't see, I have a, another video about the Sandman panel vans in the different Australian vans, and they're really, really fascinating. Really cool, really quirky, really odd, and I absolutely love them. I wish I could get one. my hands on one of these. These are really cool. Two classic restos. How cool is this? I'm in the Riverland of South Australia. And speaking of nice. cool, this event represents some of the classics that could be the coolest. Come with me now as we wind the automotive wow. clock back. Back to the 1970s, to a time when the panel van ruled as a recreational vehicle and everything in between through to transport for a tradie. Welcome to the 43rd Holy Australian Look at that Van thing. Nationals. Oh yeah, I got a feeling we're going to see a lot of different uh, van types, right? Some, some custom, you know, uh, whether it's vinyl wrapped or powder coated, custom paint, everything, right? And uh, different styles, maybe stock looking, totally modified, totally hot rotted, totally shagging wagon, like whatever the take, right? This is why it's so cool. These are so versatile vehicles. And uh, I just, I'm totally digging it, man. It, we did not have quite that in the US. We had van culture back then, uh, but these are cooler. I'm sorry, we didn't exactly have these style, like the Sandman. They're just too cool. It's the largest van show held in Australia. Look at that. Completing its 42nd year, the Australian wow. Van Nationals Unreal. have successfully been held throughout Australia since 1975. That's really cool. And the legacy with our vans in Australia is up there with football, meat pies, kangaroos, and Holden cars. There you go. See, it is it is up there. In the Aussie culture totem pole, it is towards the top. Very impressive. Look at this. This one is a clean one, right? Nothing crazy going on, but I love it. I love uh, orange and red. It really works on these. The oranges, right? Jeez, that looks so sharp. Love the, I don't know if those are Kreger uh, brand wheels or not, but they look really good, really period correct. Oh my God, this is such a neat vehicle. <laughs> I want it bad. Panel vans were first offered by Holden from December 1953 in the FJ model, and 7,762 were built. Nice. And by Ford Australia oh, from... Oh, look at that one. Look at that Ford. <laughs> now, uh, that's very modified, right? But it's interesting to a look at. 1961, based on the XK Falcon. Oh, too. Painters, electricians, and general laborers quickly found panel vans ideal for their trades, as the cargo bay offering extended capacity otherwise wasted in passenger space and a potential environment wow. to customize the interiors. I mean, that's not kid around. This looks like it had a, I mean, even though it's car based, looks like it had a lot of room in it, right? And look at this one all decked out with this velour. Oh my God, pillows microfiber light you know tv oh my god this is insanity man and i freaking love it popped the nicknames shag and wagons shag and sin wagon. bins and the list goes sin on. bins oh my but god in their own way That's rich, they man. represented a bit of fun wow the van culture died out in the 90s look at that that is fascinating absolutely fascinating uh the fact that someone can airbrush this onto this machine i cannot imagine the hours this took the preciseness this took how careful you'd have to be and and just scratch all that this is pure talent that's what it is i don't think this level of detail you can teach i think it's talent you're born in the 80s here in Australia, <laughs> but that is really okay incredible because today this is why these events mean just so much. What a canvas these are, right? For customization. So cool. History. 
Well, here we are, the 43rd Australian Van Nationals. How you doing, Russell? Love this, guys. Uh, we're going to take a look, I'm sure, behind. But uh, loving the orange. Again, orange works really well on these. And he's even got the orange shirt to match. Love it. Good, Fletch. Good to have you back at the Van Nats. Good on Thanks, you, mate. Russell. Nice for being here. So the Van Nats. And that was a great Oh, event. my God. That's uh, awesome. It's a beautiful spot, and we're having a good time. Fletch tends to get around a bit, doesn't he? Yeah, Fletch is all right. Yeah. <laughs> he's pretty good. Yeah, as he far looks as after us car clubs and comes to our events and... Yeah, it's good to have them covered by uh, somebody, so it's good. So, thank, yeah. thank you, Russell. They're kind words. Um, now, this van of yours. There we go. Look at that. Very rare. Okay, loving the Queensland plate that's black uh, against the orange. Looks really sharp. Nice wheels. Uh, not my top pick ever, but they are, they're okay. They work on this. Uh, but here's where it's at. If you guys didn't know already, I've said it a million times, I love old 60s and 70s era vehicles. Uh, I really think they're the best. I really missed out on them. I was born in 1992, so I seriously missed out. These are just so cool. Love the lights. Love the miniature bumper. It's, it's barely there. It doesn't overwhelm the front end. Uh, but most of all, this color, right? The orange, this groovy orange with that so 70s vinyl, uh, the stripes right here. Really, really neat. I'm digging this. In my eyes, it's not as though I see one of these every time I go into an episode. A 1979 Ford Escort Sundowner panel van. Wow. It's an Escort yep. Sundowner. Yeah, not a lot around wow. anymore. Wow, okay. Um, I must van, say, obviously. before we start, it is a tribute. Really cool. But a lot of tributes around of everything. Yep. But we wanted to do a Sundowner, and, and, and it's pretty much how they were on the in the day anyway. So uh, Love how the doors opened, unless this is modified, but... Uh, it seems to be they open at an angle like that. It's actually kind of cool. Love how it's lined with uh, some material on the inside. Uh, not a fan of the louvers, but it's okay. This is a custom vehicle, and uh, he does what he wants with it. Good on him. I, I like so, it. So, yeah, we're really pretty proud like of it. it. And, um, yeah, uh, to find a genuine one these days is almost impossible, and to get one in this condition is probably nearly impossible too. So, Oh, it, my God. Look at this thing. It just gets better around every corner. Love the Fanta, the orange Fanta. Uh, this looks like a container or something, even though it looks like it's supposed to be a Fanta can. That's kind of cool. Uh, and look at this color scheme, the sunset colors, sundowner. Oh, this is yeah. so cool. So carried the name of sundowner from the Falcon through to the Escort? Yes, I started with the Falcon, and originally they had to get permission off Sundowner Panel Van Club to get the Sundowner name because uh, wow. they had it registered. Yeah. So Ford went and saw the Sundowner Panel Van Club, mm. and they actually, yeah, said that was okay to use, obviously. Mm. Everything and, orange. And uh, Sundowner match. was born as a Ford, so yeah. It's one of those unique circumstances where big car tradition flowed through to the smaller entry model, and they kept uh, a name the same. Yes. yes. Oh, and it's a manual transmission. Oh, my God, this just keeps getting better. Yes, they run the uh, Falcon right through to the well the Transit and the Escort so they kept the kept the name right through the whole series yeah. so it was good. Now Russell about this van you have here first of all the colour popping in the sun here whoever did your paintwork is flawless it's just yeah. beautiful. Yeah it came up all right surprisingly it wasn't supposed to come up that good but they well, what you <laughs> wanted it worse. <laughs> no I didn't want it I've worse. I've never heard a situation where a bloke <laughs> right? goes back to the panel shop and says now listen mate yeah, uh, you, did, good, you did a little too good. Yeah you know what what the hell is this you return this to me like this. This is too damn good. Go mess it up. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. But uh, no, he was probably just shocked that it turned out this good. Uh, it'd be nice to, you know, bring it in, pay for something, and, and get it back in this perfect of a shape. It does. It looks immaculate. Good here, yeah. <laughs> now, I don't want to make this question sound as though I'm being smart here, but mm -hmm. air conditioning mm -hmm. on the old four-cylinder type engine, overhead cam, two-liter engine, air conditioning, does it die in the bum when you switch it on? No, well, it's a full rally spec engine, you see, so it's got a few herbs, <laughs> so uh, it, it can handle it quite well. And also, too, you've got a later That's model cool. rotary type pump. You know, I, I'd love a V8 myself, but uh, this would be a fun ride nonetheless, especially if it's a little bit souped up, right? So it's not a total dog. Uh, having a four banger in there with the manual transmission pump on there too. Be a fun ride. Uh, they it's got the look draw too. A lot less resistance yes. than the old piston type. Oh, definitely. Mm. Yeah, much easier. Russell, with the build time, how long did it take you? Uh, it's taken us about three years to build it. So okay. yeah, with the bodywork done first, and then obviously drivetrain because everything was stripped out of it. Uh, it had a sixteen hundred auto in it, so uh, that was pretty tired. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. Um, yeah, just the interior and everything we designed, and then um, built all the cupboards, and then. Yeah got it all upholstered so mate yeah. uh just back to the engine for a sec those extractors are pretty fat for a <laughs> for a four-cylinder engine you, you didn't muck around there with 
trying to get the air out. Yeah, they, they let the heat out, mate, more than anything else. But yeah, yeah. but that bonnet scoops off another van I had back yeah. in back in the eighties. So yeah. and won the nationals with that other van three times. But yeah. yeah, but this this one that's more for purpose than anything else. So yeah. and we enjoy it. All right, Russ. Look, there's no doubt about it. You're having fun. You got a 1979 car. <sighs> God love it, you got the 1979 shirt to go with it. A wine shirt to go yeah. with it, mate. Had to, had, had to coordinate. <laughs> it was a pleasure talking to you, mate. Thank no you very much. On your Fletch. Cheers, mate. Summary van here. Beautiful car. Look at this Thank one. you very much. Got a pale, uh, I wouldn't call it quite pastel, but a, a pale yellow. Not quite a banana yellow, right? A nice, almost electric blue uh, contrast. Of course, with those classic Sandman uh, fonts. You can't go wrong. Really, really cool. Not my favorite color scheme ever, uh, but, you know, with everything, the, the chrome, the wheels, it, it works. This uh, is now a Jenny, nice looking this vehicle. car here, this is a great example of how they left the dealership as a Sandman back in their day before people did a lot of additional yeah. graphics on them. And uh, That's a great point. This is a near stock looking one, uh, I reckon, anyway. It, it's very subtle. Uh, just got enough flair to it to make it fun. Uh, but I like this. I like this a lot. Customising and all that type of thing. Beautiful example. Thank you very much. We um, we bought this as, well, it was all wrong. We bought it from Chelsea in Melbourne. We searched high and low for a jasmine yellow because that's what we had in the day. And we turned it back into what we have here. That's good. Speaking of uh, a little bit of uh, custom Oh, my God. Work, love it. You've done a little... Uh, by the way, shame on me. It, it, it's pinging around in my head and I can't get it on my tongue. I cannot remember the name for the life of me of what you guys call uh, a cooler right here, right? This green thing. I know you guys have a funny Australian slang for this and I cannot remember. You guys have told me before. I'm so sorry. Uh, but look at this, the Fosters. Oh my God, why is that even there, right? Flick that away. <laughs> uh, the DA, I'm not sure what that is. Or is it, uh, I can't. I can't read it. Uh, and then, but look at we got Tui's, we got Melbourne Bitter, we got Victoria Bitter. I've had the pleasure of trying both of those. Love them. Uh, Tui's new. I've tried the blue can, and then of course your classic Coca Cola can't go wrong. A little bit there. in the back, but very it's... very understated in the back. Very functional though, right? Just plain Jane, uh, but enough to be comfy. It looks comfy back there. I, it looks really fun. By no means radical. It's just a little bit. It's just what we would have done. And Esky, it's right there. It's an ASCII. If you commented down below already, I do appreciate you. <laughs> but there it is. It's an ASCII. It said it right on there. In the dark. Perfect. Decking out, it used to be called. A mattress, some cupboards to put things in, and an arch. Yeah. And, yeah, that's pretty much all we did. We didn't put curtains or anything like that. Yeah. We just left it. I wonder whose Love idea it was too. originally to put mattress and cupboards in the back of a van. But, hey, it worked back then. <laughs> Men, for sure. <laughs> I don't know, cupboards, kitchen, hmm. Oh, well, maybe, but it does, was oh nice to God. back them into the drive-in and lie in the back and, and watch the movie, and that's yeah. what we did. Jenny, we look at the front of the car, we move towards the rear. Now, front of car, Kingswood all day long, uh, the traditional shape, moving on, uh, WB to follow a few years later, obviously. The interior of this car, the bucket nice. seats, the dash, the console, I like beautiful. It. beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful that was shape. already done. Um, we painted all the dash, um, the dash pad, we did the fascia, um, we got the door trims and redid those, uh, the seats, the console, wow. we had a donor ute which we cut things off for panel and, and stuff, uh, and we built our motor. And under the hood. And speaking of the engine, which way have you gone there? 253 four speed. See so that was, that was very, that was interesting. A 253 with a four speed manual, not bad at all, right? Not a big dog at all, but uh, enough fun. It's still a V8. You got the manual transmission. Uh, this is going to be a fun ride. I would take it. Interesting. <laughs> a lot of the Sandmans were 253s, weren't they? Yes, they were, but they were 308s. Mm. And most people wanted a 308, mm. but we had a 253, mm. and it was a good little motor. And yeah. Paint colour here, what's the name of that, Jenny? Jasmine Yellow. Jasmine Yellow. Jasmine oh, yellow. Should I should say okay. paint colours uh, with a plural. Mm. Uh, Jasmine Yellow with some graphics. Beautiful. Yes, thanks. Okay, again, thank you very much, Jenny. And a classic example of how our Holden Sandman used to look back in the day, original as they rolled away from the dealerships. Yes, that's exactly right. And um, and we've gone I can with appreciate original that. because that's what we wanted. We had an original Sandman, Jasmine Yellow, and we've got it back. We had to sell it because we had children, and the children left home, so the Sandman's back. Isn't it?
Well, how cool that, uh, you know, life always is on the move, right? Always changing. And, uh, and unfortunately, they had to get rid of theirs. Uh, but look at years and years later, uh, they get to recapture the fun that they had uh, with this vehicle and get one that's nearly similar. Really, really cool. Good Nicer does a 360. We go, <laughs> we get to a stage of our lives where we get the things that, we once upon a time had in some cases we get we, we get them, we get them back again we do we do but a lot of hunting <laughs> for the right works, color huh? and the right everything yeah. and anyway we've enjoyed it it's given us something to do yeah. post kids good on you thanks jenny time Thank now you, for Fletch. susan with an amazing 1975 hj panel van and it's Ooh. timeless hi fletch so yeah we saw this one in uh, some cinematic b-roll earlier I uh, cannot wait to hear about this one. Susan, this is looks absolutely incredible. Let's hear about yes, this Yes, it thing. is timeless. She is a 1975 HJ Sandman. She was originally a 253, uh, four-speed, 10-bolt Salisbury, originally sold by Winter and Taylor in Geelong, Victoria. No um, she's made her way to New South Wales, and we're lucky enough to get our hands on her. She's now got an awesome paint job by Wayne yeah. Harrison, another one of his great works, and we had to go with a different... Th Wade Harrison, is that what she said? Wade Harrison, this is absolutely incredible, man. Like jaw dropping. Theme. So this time we went with a time with steampunk, timeless feet. Cool. Um, yeah. So you've done it incredibly well. I'm blown away by yeah. the graphics. Before we talk about that, to think that a lot of these cars with the graphics were once upon a time original Sandman's. Yes, definitely. This was originally an absinthe yellow Sandman. Um, it's now got chrome yellow paintwork, just a little bit brighter and darker. It originally had the HJ bows with the Sandman stripe on the tailgate. Um, Driveline, 350 Chevy. There you go. You can see it peeking out right there. Uh, that's a timeless motor. <laughs> that is a tried and true motor. I have it in my old truck. Uh, I love 350 Chevys. They just did everything right, you know, and they keep on going. In my experience, you just cannot kill them. <laughs> but now it's sporting the custom murals to make it a custom van. Now, with the graphics, where do you start? Do you just give it to a paint guy and say, I want that done? Run us through, as quick as you can, yeah. the depth, the amount of work, the, the trouble you have to go to to come up with this. Yeah, no I've kidding. I've got a broad imagination. I've uh, got a few different names in my head, depending on colours, depending on themes, but I do a lot of Googling. So I Google just a basic name or a word, and if something sort of pops, we can add it. And Wayne's awesome. He, I could literally say, I love this picture, but I only want this part of the, the artwork, the cogs or something in the artwork, and every wow. job he's done just comes back amazing. The theme on that, yeah. just the way that you've, you've created that, the insides of a clock. That is timeless. It is very much timeless. So time yeah. never ends. When did it start? When will it finish? We'll never know. There you go. Now, isn't that a conversation for go. another episode of Classic Restos? I don't know when, but I'm sure we're going to touch on it. Now, Yeah, the, uh, the endless fallacy, right? Uh, the most valuable thing in the world is not gold or platinum or diamonds or money or whatever. It is time, right? Look at the inside real quick before we go on here. Just the... the, the unbelievable intricate detail has no end you saw it under the hood even on the interior wheel wells uh you see it on uh the inside of the back here on on the side the walls here on the divider everything this is just absolutely crazy now in the back i like what you've done it's not overdone at all it's just really no. classy and really nice not overdone it it's definitely um, amazing and something you probably won't ever see in another one but it's still not overdone it's it's still somewhat subtle for being so custom. It was a trim that was put together in less than two weeks. Um, we were lucky enough, we had a great guy who did our diamond tufting and he was the only one I'd let diamond tuft, um, Pete Frez. Then we had um, another lady who trimmed all our um, woodwork. We made all the, the, the boxes and the sides and the decking and Wayne muraled the uh, actual archway. Susan, lovely catching up with you. Wow. Love what you've done with Timeless. All of these vehicles here, uh, like I said earlier, talking to... One final look, look at that beauty. Now, again, this is not something I would own. Uh, I, it, this is just too much for me. It, it's incredible. It's, it's amazing. Uh, but I would be afraid to start that up and put it in gear. I'm not even kidding. That, that's, how much, that's how intricate it is. It's too much for me. So I would never own something like this, uh, but I have to appreciate it. I have to appreciate the work that, that went into this. It, right. It's great. You it could really talk is. for just so long on each car. 
Yeah, it's simply amazing. The passion that people have, ours has turned from passion to obsession, but we just huh. love our vans. So yeah. every weekend, if we can get out and just go for a cruise, yep. it's a bonus. Good on oh, you, Susan. Yeah. Well done. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Fletch. Alrighty, guys. Well, uh, I'm going to end it there. That's a really long video. If you would like to uh, check the original one out, remember, it is linked in the description down below. Definitely worth a look. It looks like a really fun show and a great highlight of the 43rd Australian Van Nationals. Van Nats, uh, for short. Really, really love that. Really cool seeing the interviews and seeing these things up close, uh, seeing that many in one spot with all the different variation and uh, some stock, some customized, really, really cool vehicles they are. Uh, I just love these. I, I could learn about them over and over. They're really, really fun. So please share your thoughts and stories down below uh, having to do with, of course, these awesome van life that was in the 70s and 80s and 60s in Australia. These are just so cool. I, I cannot say it enough. And uh, most of all, tell me what your favorite one highlighted on this video was. Uh, my favorite one, I guess, uh, it, it, let, me, let me say it this way. My favorite one for appreciation of how splendid it was, was this last one. Because you know that was just unbelievably custom and amazing airbrush work. Uh, paint work, whatever. And then also, the one I would have uh, would actually be the orange one in the beginning. The guy with the orange Hawaiian shirt. That one was really, really cool. Really clean and, and almost perfect looking. Uh, but it was a good blend. You know, I, I would still drive it. It's not so nice like this where it's like an art piece. So like on this video, help this video out if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, join our awesome community and browse my channel for awesome videos like this. Uh, check the description out for this original video and otherwise you can support my channel. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Until next time, catch you later.